members of Star Wars have always been a fan favorite faction, and I think that all started with that scene in The Empire Strikes Back. Six mysterious characters, all with cool and unique designs, five of which wouldn't be heavily featured in the films ever again. I remember being a kid soaking up as much information about them as I could, and I became particularly fascinated with their ships, so today that's what I'll be talking about. The ships of the bounty hunters from The Empire Strikes Back. Let's get the obvious one out of the way, the Slave One. Boba Fett's ship was a modified Fire Spray 31 class patrol and attack craft. It was first owned by Jango Fett, but it passed to Boba after his death. In the midst of the Clone Wars, Boba was arrested and the ship wound up in the hands of the pirate Hondo Onaka who repainted it. It's currently unknown how he got the Slave One back, but it was in Fett's possession again by the end of the Clone Wars. It was armed with laser cannons, blaster cannons, seismic charges, ion cannons, and launchers for proton torpedoes and concussion missiles. In Legends, the ship was an experimental police craft for the prison moon Uvo 4. Uvo 4 is still canon, having been mentioned in the book Thrawn, and the reference book Star Wars Absolutely Everything You Need to Know also says the Slave One was first used there, but that book has some known inconsistencies, so that may or may not still be true. Bosk's ship was a modified YV-666 light freighter known as the Houndstooth. It is a canon ship thanks to its appearances in the Clone Wars and the book Ezra's Gamble, but not much is actually known about it, so I'll shift over to Legends for more details. The ship was armed with a laser cannon turret, an ion cannon, and a concussion missile launcher. The interior included a training chamber, an armory, a medical bay, and a prison. The prison was a pretty bleak place where Boss kept his trophy collection and a skinning table for Wookiee captives. The rest of the ships have only been shown in Legends material so far. Dingar owned a Jumpmaster 5000 that he called the Punishing One. Originally a stock transport, Dingar modified it to hold a quad laser cannon, an ion cannon, and a proton torpedo launcher. The laser cannon was operated by a permanently installed R2 unit so Dingar could concentrate on flying. It was a smaller ship classified as a starfighter and did not carry any holding cells because Dengar had a habit of only collecting dead bounties. It was also fairly slow in hyperspace, only having a class 3 hyperdrive. The IG-2000 was a completely unique starship designed and used by IG-88. Since it was operated by a droid, systems like life support or inertial compensators were often disabled, allowing the ship to perform dangerous maneuvers that would be life-threatening to an organic pilot. It was armed with two heavy laser cannons and one ion cannon. The only area of the ship that held any life support systems was the prisoner hold. The ship was destroyed along with one of the IG-88 models by Boba Fett's Slave 1 when the IG-2000 attempted to ambush and steal Han Solo from him. The final ship we'll be talking about today is the Mist Hunter, the Byblos Drive Yard's G1A Starfighter operated by Zuckus and Forlom. Owned specifically by Zuckus, the ship was named for the ammonia mists of his home planet Gan. It was armed with two assault laser cannons. The atmosphere inside the ship was filled with ammonia so Zuckus could fly without his breathing apparatus, but the prisoner cells were airlocked so oxygen breathers could survive. And since Forlom was a droid, he had no issue. That brings this list to a close as we've now covered the ships belonging to every bounty hunter featured in The Empire Strikes Back. Which ship is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.